Hello! In this video I'll show you a little bit about how to make a graphical user interface. First we start to make a VPF application and give it a name. This is the designer. This is here where we generate the user interface. We can do it either by typing in things here in the SAML code, or we can go up here to the document outline, no, to the toolbox, sorry, yeah, and we can just drag it on. Let's say that we want a button, like this. You can see that we have a button there, and we have the sample code down here describing the button, how it is arranged, where it is located, and other stuff like it's 75 pixels, pixels wide. And we can move it and see that it changes the marking. And this is the marking according to the grid layout. So let's just type in. So let's just make a GUI, simple GUI. This button I like to call say hello, so I'll name it. Otherwise, we cannot activate it, we cannot distinguish it from other buttons. So I call it say hello, and instead of button, I'll just say. You can see here that we are changing it. <coughs> but it can't do anything yet, it's just there. But if we double click it, we'll get an event here, a little method that is activated whenever the button is hit. And in here we can type Hello, like this. Let's run the code and see what happens. Say hello. Hello. So this simple code works. We can add some more stuff. Let's add here a text box. It is down here a text box up here and we can name it Thing to say, and we can go to our code and just force it to say whatever we are writing in here. Dao. So it says Dao. with it or we can type in here that we want it to be at 10 10 and in this one we want it to be at 200 and 10 and here we want it to be 180 wide <coughs> Save text instead, for example, 
and we can add another text box saying this should be at 10.30 no 50 and it should also be 180 and we like it to be 200 high something like that display text so instead of this say hello thing here we can make it say <coughs> display text the text sorry text plus equal this text box up here which says say something we can call it text to save like this instead so at the moment we're taking the text to save text and save it into display.text and we want to signal to our user that we have saved it so we want to put it equal to an empty string afterwards and when the program is initialized up here we want it to start with an empty string in the display text and in the text to save also an empty string So we can say, see here that the default text is text box and text box, but when we start the program, it starts out with empty lines. And I can say something, and I can say Windows or Fanta, and it will just keep adding. So now we have something working, but <coughs> this is probably not the best place to locate our code. Even though we can, we like to make the code of the main window sample.cs file. Saml is our graphical user interface file and the CS is the code behind of the graphical user interface and we want the code here to only be about the graphical user interface. So instead we want to use a controller that will handle our data. So let's add a controller. Just like that. So up here we are initializing our text. These are graphical user elements so they are allowed here and we say controller moving it up at class level like that Then we just call the controller to save the data there instead of this one. So we said controller dot save data and the data we want to save is this data up here like this. And the function isn't made, so we are just making it. Now we have it in here. And what we actually wanted to have here is a list of strings. And in our constructor.
we are initializing this list like this and we want to save our data all data are add data like this <coughs> so now we can save them but we want to display them as well so we're making a new, a new method in here that formats all these data, so we'll just call it data to display Putting in the same logic as before. Like this, looping through the list, creating our data. And then here we just say, now that we have this, we want to say display.text. equals controller dot data to display and as we can see we haven't changed the functionality Just to show you a few other features, I'll show with you the list box. Here it is. We'll name it. Drop down box. And we can initialize this here. We're initializing it from our controller. So now we have a list here, and we want to display that list within our drop-down box here. So we just say ddbox string is in controller data for DD box items dot add is like this we can't of course use the controller before we had initialized it and we can see here that we have menu one two and three and we can add some more so 
to show you here that we have them. And we want something to happen whenever we activate it. And we'll just double click it, we'll get the selection event here. And we can say again system.windows.machinebox.show and we want this dvd box dot selected index i want selected an item and i want the string of the selected item so now we can see when i select menu <laughs> i misspell something i select menu free and i get menu free The last thing I want to show you here is that when we run this program, we type something. We can type something else. Save, please. But I can also type down here. And it didn't make sense because if I type something new here, it will disappear. So we don't want us to be able to change in this. And we'll simply do this by going to this one and say is read only true. Now we can see here that we cannot change it, but we are still able to copy and paste within our program. That was what I wanted to show you today about VPF applications. I hope you enjoyed it. Have fun.